All right, that's it. Jesus has gone off his rocker for good. You know, he's gone downhill ever since Peter said he was Messiah. He just keeps talking about how he's got to suffer and be killed. Then the whole resurrection thing. And this work we're doing, it's so important. He's been teaching and healing and casting out demons. He's reached almost every demographic. And he's gathered a great team of disciples and motivated and managed us well. But now, he's firmly set on the path of destruction. It's inevitable. He probably will get killed. He's going down, and he's going to take the whole thing down with him. We can't let it fall apart. We've gotten too far, done too much. What are we going to do? We can only keep it going for so long with him like this. Maybe it's time to start thinking about who's going to take over after, well, you know. And why shouldn't it be me? I'll give you that maybe you have known him longer, but I have, uh, I've healed three more lepers than you, and you're only up on me for one demoniac. Besides, I have a better speaking voice. You know, I bet Peter thinks it should be him. Always kissing up to Rabbi. Uh-oh. Now you've done it. Jesus wants to know what we were arguing about. Act natural. Look at the ceiling, I don't know. What is he talking about? Oh, whoever wants to be first must, hold on, I've got to write this down. This is exactly the sort of thing I've been waiting for. This could be the answer to our argument. All right, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all? Last of all and servant of all? Well, that doesn't make any sense. If that's the way it is, I don't want to be first. No, thank you very much. I don't want to follow down your self-destructive path, Jesus. If that's how to get to the top, I'll gladly step aside. I don't want that. But wait, does that mean that I'll be last and therefore be first in the first place? Or the last place? I'm so confused. Confused and afraid. I'm confused because all the things you see, you say don't seem to make sense anymore. The first must be last, the greatest must be the servants, the Messiah must be killed. And I'm afraid because I don't understand and I should. And I'm afraid because I don't really want all of this to fall apart. And I don't want to die. And if I'm honest, I'm most afraid about you dying, Jesus. I mean, you're the most powerful, strongest, wisest, most amazing man I've ever met. I've never really believed in anything or anyone before, not until I met you. And now you talk about being killed. You, who can cure the sick, blind and deaf, feed thousands from nothing and walk on water. How can you die? How will I be able to believe in anything anymore if you fail? It just doesn't make any sense. And now what's this? You have a little child with you. You put the child in the middle of all of us. Is this a test? What are we supposed to do with this child? I see no need of healing. No demons, no lack of sight or hearing. What's that? Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. Oh, okay. Welcome, little child. <laughs> I guess we weren't very welcoming when Jesus put you in the middle of us. I guess we were pretty preoccupied. You see, we were trying to figure out which one of us was the greatest. And then Jesus said this thing about the first being last. And, uh, well, actually, no one would argue that you were first, would they? Who would vote for you to be the next one in charge around here? 
A child has always been the symbol of the future, sure, but also a symbol of powerlessness. Little by little you learn to talk and walk, tie your shoes. Little by little you become stronger, but that takes a lot of time, and you need lots of help, don't you? Jesus is offering a whole flipped upside down sort of world, isn't he? Authority isn't about personal ranking. It's not about how many people I can have working for me. It's about how many people I can serve. We all loved seeing the things Jesus could do, the things he had us do, the things he said and taught. But this isn't about toppling the corrupt authorities around us. He's going after a much bigger target, human authority, human pride, and even human wisdom. Because by our standards of wisdom, this doesn't make a lot of sense. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure and then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Things that will never get us to be a great success or give us position or give us power and authority by worldly standards. It's all so impossible. It's upside down, or maybe we're already upside down and what he's offering is right side up. I don't know. But I know that it's life-giving. You know, funny, we thought he was being self-destructive, and maybe he is. But it's his sacrifice that's giving life to us all. And it will be our sacrifices that will make us first. But that doesn't even matter anymore. It's through our sacrifices, every little thing that makes us servants of all, (coughs) that the world will be able to participate (coughs) in that wisdom and that reconciliation. (coughs) It won't fall apart. We followers of the way of Jesus will keep it going, not because we went after authority, not after the authority that the world taught us to, or lived by human wisdom, but because we followed Jesus in that foolish wisdom from above, that sacrificial life-giving spirit that still might not make any sense to me, but despite the fear, despite the not understanding, I will give myself over to (coughs) completely. Use me here where I (coughs) where I am. I'm not going to pray anymore that you'll change your plans. Despite my fear, I place my life in your hands. The future can wait. Tomorrow might be too late. So Jesus, Jesus, use me here.